In this tutorial I want to have a look at creating a part using synchronous technology and um, I want to start by using the line command I want to switch to say um, that top view and if I um, hit the F3 key that locks the plane you can see that it's locked over here um, control H will give me um, that sketch view and as I start drawing, you can see that um, the line is coming off that point I've selected. If I hit the S key, it changes that line to be um, symmetric. And um, I'm just going to sketch in the rough shape of what I'm after. Um, as I move over geometry, you can see that it's picking up off that end point and give me an um, extended um, connection. So um, I can just sort of close off that shape that I'm after. So if I unlock the plane, hit the escape key, um, I can click on that region. And by clicking on the arrow here, I can just give it a depth um, just to um, lock things down. Let's add some dimensions here. This is a half profile. So I want to go 455 divided by 2 to give me the depth there and this one here I want to have as being um, 330 and um, I'll lock this in uh, this one here is um, I wanted to have locked but um, I just forgot to do that so um, I can come over here and lock it from here if I wish um, one other dimension I want to apply is that angle between so if I'm picking this one and this one, I can place an angle. Um, again, I want to lock it. And um, you can see that this highlighted light, um, edge here um, indicates that this is the face that's going to be moved. You can see that from the arrow that it's pointed to. If you want to change the arrow, that will change the other face. So we can change that to 60. So that's sort of given us enough to um, get started with. Um, I now want to add a little bit of extra geometry to this. So if I go back to um, line command, I can hover, block it with the F3 key, then control H, and move this around. So if I come off the end point here, um, I can extend this out, say, um, somewhere around 300. And I just want to add a step in here and come back up to not the midpoint but in here somewhere so one thing that i want to ensure is that um, i want this face here to be collinear with that 60 degree line so um, if i then unlock the plane um, notice i didn't need to create the line at the end here it's it's using the edge of the part to be um, and region boundary so um, again checking that my relationships up here um, endpoint is the primary one but if I leave it set to all you can see that I can pick up off the endpoint and that new geometry is the same thickness as the rest of it so um, adding in some extra dimensions um, I can come off here and drag that out lock that one down um, likewise I can come off here and lock this one this one will make 30 and uh, this edge here ought to be 18 and again I'd like to lock it so um, I can come over here and lock down these other dimensions on here so um, I would also like to add an angular relationship on here again we'll lock it and change that making sure that this is the face that we're changing and um, finally 
straight I'll add a dimension on to here. This one we're going to make um, say 550 divided by 2 and again we want to move it in that direction and lock it. So that sort of generally gives us our main profile. Um, um, what we're after. Um, one of the things that we may decide that we want to ensure is that this face here is parallel. So if I click up on this plane here, um, anytime you see the tick I can right mouse click and it will accept that and I want to make it parallel to that one there. So that's built in a um, geometric relationship and that ensures that that, that um, cutout in here remains parallel to um, that face here. So if I adjust this one, this one has got to um, adjust with it. Um, next step is to um, create some cutouts. So I uh, will go back to the line command and click on the face and I can use Control H to um, define my cutout that I'm going to draw. And if again hover over that region, I should be able to um, just resketch. It's not picking that one up, so I just need to hover over it. And this means that when I create my um, cutout, um, it's going to work off those um, collinear faces so that the two will stay um, together. Um, now, if I sort of define that region, I can hit the shift key and that allows me to add to that so I can do both at once. Um, I've also got the ability to either, if I pick up on the arrow, it will either add or remove. Um, if I want, if it, if it was cutting more than one face, you may want to ensure that it is um, either cutting or um, adding. So we can actually just define it up here so we can cut through and um, it doesn't matter on the depth on what that is, it's just clearing out that slot. So we shall add in some more dimensions. Um, I want to put a dimension across the um, both slots. And again, we're going to lock these in. Um, we will also want a dimension from there to the top edge. and um, across the width of the slot. So we just need to define the um, size of the thing. On, on this one, um, I'm only going to put the one dimension because the collinear um, relationship or coplanar relationship it's going to hold, so if I adjust one, it will adjust the other anyway. Um, so the only other dimension I need is um, to go, I'll take it from in here, and then we'll come back to that uh, reference plane over here. So again that one needs to be locked as does that one. Um, you'll also notice that um, when I adjusted the width up here it's it's come off that center line um, because it's going to be um, constrained what we can do is we can just put that on um, So it, it's, it's got a relationship so that it's got to stay uh, above there. 
and we can we can apply our um, changes later. So um, putting in our um, sizes, um, I want this one. Um, distance distance needs to be like so, and these are all going to be um, twelve mil. Okay, so that's telling me that that one can't be changed. But I can change it that way. So as you can see, I've, I've locked this dimension here. So it can't move in that direction. Um, and it's just telling me that my design can, um, intent has sort of held firm. And, and that just sort of... Um, bears out um, what um, the software is, is doing so again I want to move um, in this direction because it can't move in the other direction and the same with this one we need it to move um, not that face um, that one there. so you can see it's highlighting up here to tell me which face it's intending to move and this overall dimension I want to be say 136 and this one here um, I want to make say um, 80 um, two more dimensions you can see that the two slots have become um, different lengths so again we can just put in a dimension on here and lock that in and we'll say that's going to be i don't know 45 and likewise on the other one so that's sort of um, constrained our part for us and um, we've got it reasonably good. One more um, relationship I'd like to apply is just the um, parallel on on these um, slot faces. So if I go from there, right mouse click to there, So that creates that parallel relationship. Um, I'd like to do the same on these other ones just to make sure that um, when I do um, a modification um, they are going to stay um, as I require them. So I'm going to have something fitting into this slot. Um, what I want to do is I want to be able to rotate this face here so as I zoom in, um, I want to move the steering wheel up to this face here and I want to um, tilt it just very slightly. Now if you can see um, down the bottom of the screen it's saying that the design intent is um, uh, adjusting two faces so it's actually affecting um, if, if I move right out, you can see it's affecting the other one because we've got that parallel face on there. So I want to tilt this inwards, um, say five degrees. So just to prove that, we can switch to um, wireframe. And if we come out to our right hand view, you can see that that face is actually um, rotated on both sides. So, you know, that shows that that um, parallel face is um, working. So again, I want to do the same thing, the same direction on this one here. Um, I could have sort of mirrored these, but because these faces are going in the same direction, um, the mirror wouldn't, wouldn't actually work. So you can see here in the wireframe mode how those two faces are adjusting together. So again, we just want to move that five degrees. And um, if I wanted to, I can create a um, final 
relationship, um, sorry, dimension on here, um, just to um, confirm what that angle is. And I'll do the same on the other one. And switch back to my um, shady with visible edges. So what we've done is we've um, designed this component. Um, you can see that we've got something that's um, reasonably complex and um, it should hold together. What I um, haven't done is change the dimension on here. Um, I just wanted to bring that one down a fraction. Okay, and as, as I make those changes, you can see everything else is still holding together nicely. The next thing I want to do is to add a couple of notches in down this, this edge here. Um, so I'll go into the line command and um, hover over this face. Rather than just hitting um, the F3 key straight, straight away, um, you see that this line down the bottom is highlighted in green. And if I hit the N key for next, um, you can see that green line is, is moving around and as I move down onto the angled line you can see the cursors are actually um, rotating around to um, match that angle. So if I now hit the F3 key um, and go Control H you'll see that it rotates to um, match that um, orientation. So now um, I can work off um, this geometry here um, just by um, clicking and I can create my notches that I want to have and um, it's using that orthogon orthogonal um, orientation so if I now unlock that plane um, I can pick up off here this region uh, hit the shift key and I can do multiple selection and then just drag out those two um, notches in here and um, that sort of holds that together. Um, finally what I want to do is add in some uh, rounds on some of these corners. Um, rather than doing it in synchronous mode I'll show you that you can actually um, transition to order and have a, have a hybrid file um, so we can use our um, rounding tool. Um, I want to set a say a, a 30 mil rad onto um, this edge here, um, and you can see that that comes in. Um, I can change that value to say 70, and put a slightly larger round on that edge there and say maybe 20 on this one in here and then finally um, I'm going to change that to a 2 mil rad on this one and this one here so that's sort of um, completed that now um, what I want to do is, is make it into a, a full part so I can go into the um, mirror, uh, copy part, click on the part, and um, as you saw earlier on, I made these um, uh, horizontal so that it was right on those planes, and that leaves me the ability to um, create my um, part that's a, an exact copy um, from one side to the other. The next part of the process is that I want to drive this model with um, variables. So if I just go into the tools menu and we have the variable table here 
and you can see that each of these um, dimensions that is placed on the model is um, loaded into this variable table. So these are all actually driving dimensions and you can see that we've got the lock symbol on here to show that these dimensions are locked. Um, if I scroll down to the bottom here, um, I want to just um, be able to drive, for example, these um, slot widths um, from some variables. So the way I do that is to come down the bottom here and um, just type in the name of a variable and give it a value. So the thickness I want to have is 12 mil. And in the case of the slots, I want to have a clearance, and I'll be putting a 0.2 mil clearance on there. So um, I will end up with a slot width, which if I tab across, um, I'm going to use a formula for, so I can use these names on here. I'll expose those so that we can uh, see them. And the width is going to be the thickness plus the clearance and as you see when I um, hit enter on that it calculates the formula for me so um, we'll expose this one as well and coming back up to here's the thickness of the actual part so I can use that dimension directly there and you can see that the formula comes in and the dimension then becomes um, grey, which means it's um, locked. Uh, also, I have these um, slot widths here, so um, just by typing that in, um, I can um, change these values here. So basically what this allows me to do is um, have all of these linked to um, the one value and um, I can go through and, and just pick up on all of those and have them locked away so um, that's the um, final piece of this actual model we'll next be moving on to looking at an assembly and how that um, can be used to drive individual parts Having built this base part, um, I'd like to build a, um, an assembly from here. So I shall go to the uh, new menu and we can do a, um, an assembly of the active model. So this takes this part and drops it straight into the model. And um, that gives us our starting point um, from which to um, develop the next pieces. Um, I'm going to create a board that sits in these front slots here and the back ones. So um, I shall just go from here and create a new uh, metric part. The second part is basically very simple. We'll have a rectangle by center and we'll make it 330 wide, 1000 high, make it the angle zero. And I just want to um, add in A portion here <clears throat> and trim out this piece here so um, like we did before we'll add in dimensions um, actually we'll add in a thickness to it first and then we can add dimensions um, we'll dimension from here to here And this one here will make 12. And then we want a width on here, which will make 70. And then this one as well will be 70. So coming back to our PMIs, we'll just lock all of these values. And finally, we'll have a dimension across the top here. Lastly, we'll just drop this one up. 
and make the overall height um, to the bottom of the slot a thousand. So we'll just save this. There's the front panel. Now that we've created the second part, we can place that into the assembly. So let's close that file and go to our parts library and just drag this panel in. So we've got a uh, mate relationship to start with and we want to place it on the back of that slot. And we want to do a plane or a line. So if we just zoom in um, so we can see what we're doing. And we want to pick up on uh, the inside face there. And for the last one, what we can use is the connect relationship because, as you can remember, we've got the um, uh, slot angled. So we want to connect that um, inside edge to the top face, and that completes this um, as assembly. Now that we have the um, two parts in the assembly, let's look at driving the um, part variables from the assembly. So if we go to the Tools tab, uh, you can see that we have the variables table that we have in the part documents, but we also have peer variables, which is, allows us to look at um, the variables not only in the assembly file, but in the part files as well. So let's start with the um, assembly model. Um, we've got the three relationships here um, for the um, mates uh, of the two parts and we can add in um, extra ones in here um, so we can give that 12 mil and we can have a clearance in here we can say that will be 0.5 so um, that's created these variables here. Uh, one thing I noticed that I haven't done is to save the assembly, so let's just do that. And um, go back into our um, variables. So we've got these two. So if we highlight that and right mouse click and copy link, we can then click on any part in the model and we can see the variables coming up for those. Um, so we had um, the thickness, so what we could do is come into the formula, right mouse and paste link. So now that you can see that we've actually got that driving from the um, uh, assembly model. And we can do the same with the um, clearance, so we can copy that. And then go back to here and you'll notice that um, where we have um, these values here which are driven from these dimensions down here we can actually um, see that these values are being driven now from the assembly so if we go back to our assembly and change this value to 0.3 um, we can then go back into here and um, these other dimensions will be um, updated um, and um, you can see that these values will update when we click on the update tools. So now we have a um, an assembly that can drive the um, components within the assembly as well. So we have the full um, scope of how everything is going to be built together.